in this tutorial we're going to have a little look at kind of digital gain staging within a DAW, the concept of headroom and resolution. So there's a kind of myth that gain staging within a DAW isn't something we really need to worry about these days because of something called 32-bit floating point um, architecture, um, which basically means that even if things are clipping at the channel level, even if things are distorting here, as long as they're not distorting at the master fader, um, everything will kind of be okay. And there's some truth to that, but it's still a good idea to have a, a good understanding of gain staging. So I've got a test oscillator here, playing a glorious uh, <laughs> 1K sine wave, sort of a pure tone here, at 1K frequency. Um, and if we have a look at the EQ here, we can see that there is just a single frequency uh, in the frequency spectrum. There's no extra harmonics on either side of it. And if I turn that all the way up, we can see that there's nothing hidden down here in the in the depths of, of the kind of noise floor. There's just simply a 1K uh, sine wave there. So I'm going to leave that alone a sec, and I'm going to have a look at this uh, test oscillator with some poor gain staging to see what can happen if you're kind of not careful and not paying attention to to your inputs and outputs. So I've got this channel strip here. It's all broadly uh, compressors chained up together. So something that you'd never do, something that you'd never do uh, to this scale in, in real life, but it's just a very extreme example to show what's happening at this test oscillator. So the first plug in here, we can see that there, the inputs are peaking, the outputs are peaking and it's all kind of clipped. Next, doing the same thing, the compressor's working away on that sine wave, uh, but it's clipping on the inputs and the outputs. Same on this compressor by kind of quite extreme values. Same on this channel G strip here. Some of these are kind of model plugins as well that tend to work better at, at lower input levels. So with them clipping and screaming all the way over here, it's not great. Same with, again, another SSL style comp there, and then 1176 at the end here with the red lights going as well, but the output turned down there. So if I turn this test oscillator back on, we've got it muted at the at the, at the the bus level, it's going out to a bus, and I've put that there so that the EQ can show the effects that are, are there uh, post fader. Because here we've got the fader turned down to make sure it's not clipping. If I turn that back up to zero, um, it will clip there at that level. So if I go minus 6.4, um, back to where it was, it's just 5 dB under and it's it's saying that it shouldn't clip and that there's no problems with the signal there um, because everything's uh, not distorting here at the mixer stage. And this is where some of the fallacy comes from the idea that if it's not clipping there, that there's no problem with anything you're doing in the chain. If I just bring up the EQ here, that spectrum analyzer, if I bring up the other one from the original test oscillator, the kind of original signal, and one with poor gain staging, you can see all that distortion adds in all these extra harmonics under the hood. And even if I scale that down, so we're only seeing the sort of first 60 dB, which is kind of um, an accepted sort of scale there for what we might actually perceive and what, what we might actually hear, we can still see that there's a couple of extra harmonics added in at 2K and 3K that we can kind of see on this uh, frequency analyzer and we're adding that distortion to the signal but as soon as we look towards that kind of noise floor we'll see that there's so much added in both directions as well we've got uh, a 100 hertz kind of harmonic down there as well as all this stuff there so whilst it might not be the end of the world that you get a little the odd clip and the odd peak here and there it's much better to kind of do sensible gain staging and on this one i've just made sure that at each stage the input and the outputs are not kind of clipping at each kind of plugin. Because even though we've got this 32-bit floating point system, it doesn't really apply necessarily to the input and outputs of individual plugins within your channel strip, um, which is a kind of key concept that people kind of forget. So we'll have a look at the next compressor, and we'll see that the input and outputs are more regulated. What's going in is coming out. Same for this next compressor. Nothing's too hot. It's kind of coming in at around minus 9, leaving it around minus 9. I've got the channel G here again, similar kind of stuff. It's not all peaking here, it's not all clipping at the plug in chain. It's a much more uh, sort of measured, measured level of compression. Same for the solid dynamics 1176. It's not kind of clipping now. 
we've got a gain plugin adding a little bit of gain just to uh, get that back up so it's a similar level uh, to this one at 0.5 of a db 0.4 of a db that's that's relatively comparable in terms of uh, it being sort of scientifically accurate enough to to make a direct comparison so let's bring up the uh, channel eq analyzer and see with this so here we can see that with the better gain staging there is still some distortion probably from um some sort of soft clipping from compressing a sine wave so so hard and chaining it so much but we can see that there's a big big difference between the bad gain staging and the kind of better i'm not going to say good gain staging because we've still got uh, a few distortions here and we're doing something crazy on the channel strip uh, side of things but we can see that there's much much less damage being done to the signal in terms of the distortion that's occurring by comparison to the poor gain staging and certainly by comparison to the original now let's amp this up and so we'll scale up up to see what's happening at those lower ebbs as well and we see that even though there is still some extra harmonics added in some of these larger ones that we've got here we can see that it's nowhere near as bad and there's nowhere near as much distortion as that bad gain staging even though both signals in the mixer end up pretty much at the same level they're all there at 0.5 db it's from minus 0 0.5 or minus 0 0.4 dB. Um, so even though these things hit are here, it's not showing the full story in terms of gain staging. Well, that's it for the first part of this tutorial on gain staging. In the next video, we're going to have a little look at headroom, fader resolution, and where the best place to start mixing from is within Logic, how to change the mixer metering view, um, having a little look at the output fader, the stereo output versus the master fader, and why the master fader is rubbish and we should totally get rid of it, as well as a few other tips and tricks along the way.